My name is Christina Freeman. I have something called Other Specified Dissociative Disorder 1B, which is a form of multiple personalities. This disorder stems from childhood sexual abuse. Each different voice you hear comes from a different part of me. I am using these voices to spread awareness about dissociative disorders. And I am using these voices to spread awareness about the prevalence of sexual abuse within Mormonism. People don't realize how many victims of sexual abuse come out of Mormon homes. People don't realize that LDS doctrine often ails victims more than it helps them feel whole. Repressive standards punish victims while fostering abusers. Church leaders don't focus on fixing the problem. They focus on keeping control. I've been writing my story, now it's time that my story gets told. This part about worthiness interviews wreaking havoc on my traumatized heart is a good place to start. Thank you for listening. Female victims of sexual abuse have a hard time living up to the church's idealized mold of a woman composed of restraint and repose. The church wants dignified embodiments of young women girls. They want someone who values faith more than what she knows. They want an eternal optimist with an innocence that shows in her face. She will not be disgraced. She won't be used or demeaned when they say they want women who are virtuous. They mean women who are clean from any sexual sin. Of course, she can be forgiven, but not too much. Mormon men don't love sluts. It just isn't just. It's hard to have faith when you don't know how to trust. And you can't fake upbeat or pretend to be sweet when you feel like you're drowning in destructive despair. It should be okay to scream. It should be okay to swear. Why the fuck would God care if victims use a harsh word to lament their sad curse? When fathers play around with their little girls' bodies, it gets wired in our brain like an unforgiving chain. We are slaves! this week? Did you let the boys mistreat you? No, you can't take the sacrament yet, but keep trying. The more the war raged in my soul, the more they kept denying my right to reach out to the Savior without feeling like a blight in his fold. I have trauma still from the things my bishops told me. Like, after learning that my testimony was strained and I couldn't contain my tormented inclinations to seduce nasty, awful men, even though I wanted to, I wanted to stop. But like the hands on a clock, I just couldn't escape the descent of my fate. When one bishop learned all of that, he decided to put me on informal probation. All that tortured information earned me shame. What I wanted was help. What I received was blame. Do you hear that little voice? Do you know what you're adverting when you make harlots and Jezebels and all the other daughters from hell take remorseful accountability for their pain? Instead of setting victims free, you strangle them with the childhood chain their fathers made. Fortunately, I got away before things got worse. 
I took away their power to upbraid the nature of my tortured, dismal state when I left the Mormon church at 25. But not everybody makes it out like I did. I've talked to women who were still trapped in the terrible hold of the church's grasp when their trauma hit its peak. When they became so sexual they wanted to die, their bishops, their bishops replied by forming a formal disciplinary council. In front of a room full of men, they had to confess all their sins. I'm told of an occurrence where the list went on and on. The brethren couldn't believe that one woman could commit so many appalling misdeeds. Finally, one of the men thought to ask her, did anyone sexually abuse you when you were a child? I am told the woman started to cry in an anguishing, wild way. I hope those untrained men felt the need to defray. I hope they felt the gravity of their mistakes. How dare they? How dare they? Think that it's okay to magistrate, even excommunicate a person like me. They don't know what a sinner is. It's not a girl who acts dirty. It's a room full of sanctimonious men who look at hurt like a stain that offends. No one deserves the disdain that ascends their consensus. They confuse unworthy with defenseless.